They are also like me from the University of Tübingen. Uh, and Christian Wilmes, you know him already, he has made the presentation from the University of Cologne. So uh, there's uh, mentioned the, the Heidelberg Academy of Sciences, that's uh, uh, Sciences and Humanities, that is more or less the, the financing agency of that uh, famous project. The Rocky Project uh, is an abbreviation for the role of culture in early expansion of humans. Um, and I will talk about a bit of, about the uh, geodata management uh, today. So, uh, um, first of all, we are dealing with spatial expansions. So it's quite similar what uh, has been done in the Collab Collaborative Research Center uh, in Cologne. So we are dealing with the, the spatial expansion of habitats, of organisms, and also of artifacts. And, of course, also about the behavioral potential, which might be biological, cognitive, or cultural, of course. And uh, as we have a, a quite long-term project dealing with uh, 20 years, and we started in the year 2008, uh, of course, there are, there are different subjects. Some of them are dealing with the habitats. Some of them, the paleoanthropologists, they are dealing with the hominins. And there are also the archaeologists, they are dealing more or less with the culture. And I'm, myself, I'm a geographer, so we are dealing much, much more with the integration of the databases of the WebGIS presentation and as well uh, a bit about the, the, the models, the expansion models and the theory behind that. And as you have seen, uh, the Rocky project is dealing with a time span uh, between 3 million years uh, BP and uh, 20,000 years BP. And that is a difference to the uh, research center in Cologne. They are dealing more or less with the up till uh, uh, 200,000 uh, BP. So, uh, yeah, and of course, uh, they are focusing very much on the, uh, especially on the ways out of Africa. Meanwhile, the Rocky Project uh, is dealing with the whole of Eurasia and Africa as well. So, what do we need when we uh, would like to build up such a database? Uh, we have several research questions and, of course, uh, data uh, requirements. And, uh, of course, such a database uh, should store and uh, back up the data. It uh, should have an easy data exchange. That is a requirement as well. The geodata should be nicely visualized. Uh, it should also include some simple GIS functions. You should be able to query uh, the geodata and project relevant information, mostly metadata information from the different uh, uh, sections from, from science. Uh, it should be easy to use, of course, that uh, is a prerequisite for any type of uh, database. There should be a web access. Uh, it should not only be a database, but also an analysis tool um, for the analysis of the spatial uh, temporal expansion patterns. And that's why we have uh, built up our uh, database. We have called it ROAD which has nothing to do with the expansions itself, but it's just also, again, an abbreviation of the Rocky Out of Africa database. Uh, and you might find it on the web. I will give you uh, the address uh, later on. So uh, how does the database look like? Well, it is, uh, we have a, a prototype uh, database model, and it's uh, uh, based on open source software. You see here the PostgreSQL, the PostGIS, um, and the UML map server, and from that we have then derived our uh, database system roads. You see that there are, uh, there are many, many uh, tables, so it's a georelational uh, database, and of course there's also a visualization unit where we'll talk about a bit later on. So uh, um, I'm presenting that since several years on the CAA conferences, and uh, this was the, the structure of the database so far. Um, of course, you see that there is a, a, a desktop GIS uh, with op mostly open source software, connection via the internet. 
Uh, and then you have uh, here the UMN map server where we have all these uh, web mapping services, web feature services. Um, and you have also then uh, an output with a Hubis uh, GIS in included and you have then uh, the output via the internet browser again. For the visualization issues on, on that side we have different levels of access. Of course there is a level uh, which is uh, open to the public. Um, <coughs> that is our, our level one. Uh, where you can uh, uh, get over there and then you have uh, a bit more with the open layers this is for let's say uh, connected uh, scientists and finally we have all the, the higher levels of data uh, there is of course a restricted uh, access to that data so but uh, since several years we have seen that there are many many geo data sets which uh, are included within that database so uh, there's a, a proper geo data management required of course and uh, therefore we have uh, thought uh, about the restructuring of uh, the database a bit so um, what we have now is uh, that we have a standardized scheme which is compatible with uh, our archaeological mostly archaeological database road and the road interfaces. Um, it has a search functionality where you can look for spatial contents, for uh, thematic topics of course and also some keywords. Um, it's an open source system which is platform independent uh, with standardized uh, interfaces uh, like for example for the Open Geospatial Consortium. Um, we manage the, the user groups, yeah, so that, uh, that was the, the levels which I've uh, shown you just before. You would be able to download the raw data fails, files um, and you will have um, quite simple procedures to, crea cr to create the maps via the web mapping services uh, and of course also a quick and simple visualization. So, the new architecture looks more or less like this. We have uh, uh, the, the back end where we have the raw data storage uh, over here. We have a, a metadata catalog which is very very important. That's more or less the, that's why it's uh, mentioned over here in red. We have then uh, the WebGIS, the Geo server, that's uh, a software package. Uh, and then we have here uh, the presentation, that's the front end, that's what uh, the user uh, would be able to see. So then for the, as I said, the, the metadata catalog is very very important when you manage that uh, geo data and therefore we use the, uh, the geo network, uh, that's uh, an open source catalog where you also can, can use that, it has also several tools which are uh, supporting the metadata editing uh, and we have used that and uh, uh, you can see that this is uh, one of the examples I will talk on that uh, a bit uh, in more detail now. So uh, <coughs> as I said that uh, metadata search function uh, is provided over here you can also uh, uh, enter here any type of keyword or a region which you're looking for and uh, it is then looking for the geodata catalog. Um, this is an example for the keyword search. Um, of course you can type in there uh, any type of word but there's also uh, a default list that there are no, no, no spelling uh, errors over there or if you for example if you wrote uh, or write uh, Tanzania with an S instead of, an, of a Z um, that one is uh, uh, is looked for already and there are many many uh, possibilities and then you can see already the data which is included over there, it's geomorphological data, there's some climate data involved, there's some remote sensing data, there are the digital elevation models and much much more. Um, uh, of course you also can uh, search for uh, spatial extents, there's also a function like this where you can just uh, line up your area of interest and then you will see uh, what type of data is available uh, in the database and uh, we also have there uh, quite a simple visualization uh, tool. This is an example over here from uh, 
Heidelberg, you see the, the, usually the, the Heidelberg, which is known, is still in Germany, but there are many, many others all around the world. Uh, um, yeah, and uh, of course, for the, uh, for the geodata uh, visualization, we use the QGIS server, which uh, is providing the, the web mapping service, and uh, which is using also the same libraries as the, the QGIS desktop application. And this is a very nice tool because then it enables you that uh, once you have uh, created your maps on your, on your desktop, you can quite easily transfer them into a, a web mapping system. And uh, this is uh, done with the Apache web server, uh, which is responsible for that. And this is another example, uh, which is also provided from Tanzania uh, in Eastern Africa. Uh, where we have worked there uh, uh, quite a lot. So, well, uh, these, I was talking a bit more about the requirements. Now we are looking what we have to do if you would like to have a functioning system. So a functioning uh, database um, uh, needs also to have data input. So where is the data coming from and how do we get the data in? Yeah. And uh, if we input the data, we have to have that in a structured and a quite systematic way. So, um, <clears throat> of course, there was uh, quite a lot of work done now over, f over eight years of uh, building up the georelational database. Uh, also, you might not be able to read that. There are many, many tables where you have all these parameters and indicators. Uh, of archaeological sites. I will give uh, 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 a small example on that uh, where you can see how it works, that entity relationship model over here. Um, so, of course, if you're looking, for example, for some human remains uh, which might be found in a certain period and in a certain place, uh, then you need to have, for example, over here, the well, uh, first of all, the table of the different uh, human remains. Then you would have uh, the stratigraphy, the archaeological stratigraphy over here, uh, and over there you would have uh, to have the laboratory, for example, and over here there's a table with the publications. Uh, of course, our group, which is almost consisting of also 10 scientists, uh, is of course not able to carry out all the work uh, himself or herself. Uh, of course, we are relying on published data as, as well. So, um, as I said, I will just give a, an example of a query. So, if you would like to uh, get a list of all hominin remains between uh, 1.6 and 2 million years, um, then the question is what table do I have to, to query within the database? Um, of course, you need to have... Oops, sorry. <laughs> Uh, if you would like to uh, get the age for the period, then you have the geological stratigraphy, the hominins, that's for example over here, then the human remains, that's uh, also uh, one of these tables, and finally of course the, uh, the location locality. So that means that you're looking at uh, these tables um, over here, then you have the uh, geological uh, stratigraphy with the minimum and the maximum age, you have, of course, the locality, uh, where you have also the country or the, and the region, and of course, uh, an X and Y coordinate. Um, and on the other hand, of course, this is more or less what you're looking for. Uh, this is the genius and the species uh, of the hominin remains. So with these queries, and this is quite similar to that, uh, what uh, our colleagues from the University of Cologne are carrying out, um, they also uh, have the, that uh, nice semantic search uh, capability and both of these um, databases they are connected and linked to each other nowadays and um, uh, this gives the opportunity that you have these direct SQL connections to the GIS if you would like to, uh, to ask for that and uh, these are some examples uh, which you have if you go, you go through all these uh, windows and select uh, your tables then you can uh, came up with, a, uh, with that query result. So once you have asked that, uh, that issues from the row database 
You can also uh, put that with some background geodata and came up with uh, quite famous maps. I mentioned already uh, that example from, um, uh, from Tanzania so far. And uh, of course, there's, there's another possibility to link that also to uh, some Google Earth data, to the famous KMZ files. Uh, we have provided li uh, over this, this is an example from uh, Southern Africa, where you also can uh, find places of the human remains. Of course, uh, also the archaeologists, uh, they didn't want to uh, show the exact places uh, because maybe there are, would be some other people uh, looking for uh, these fine places. So there's a restriction on you cannot zoom in there up to, uh, let's say, uh, a, a scale larger than 1 to 10,000 over there. But this is uh, easily uh, to be made. You can see over here that uh, there's also there's the possibility to have their uh, digital elevation model of, for example, uh, the eco zones uh, in there also from uh, uh, former ages um, this this is also possible so this leads me already to my uh, uh, conclusions um, we uh, have seen that we have built up that database with a service oriented infrastructure which provides interfaces to exchange not only the spatial data sets via uh, different services uh, the web mapping services, uh, web feature services, for example, and the metadata, and especially the geoscientific metadata, they are managed with uh, a geo network implementation, which is allowing these spatial and uh, keyword searches. And uh, we have now also the opportunity to integrate also external geo data uh, within geo network metadata structure. So making the data val uh, uh, valuable or more valuable and accessible not only to the Rocky Consortium but also to associated and interested uh, researchers. And we have now uh, made, in the, within the last year, uh, we have made a connection to our computer center uh, for long-term uh, storage. Um, so uh, this is also a, a quite nice uh, facility over there at the University of Tübingen. Um, finally, the outlook. So uh, <coughs> we are looking for, uh, of course, internal and external geodata, which uh, uh, the management is already partly achieved. Um, the internal and external web services, uh, that's also uh, just work which is in, still in progress. Uh, tether with the road modules and the virtual atlas. The virtual atlas is a synonym for, for a tool where we are just providing the results of the research. Uh, tether with external web GIS, like the, the one, for example, from uh, Cologne. Um, and we, we are on the way uh, to incorporate all the web processing services to provide additional geodata information, for example, uh, the automatic terrain analysis of some digital elevation uh, sources. And uh, this leads me to the end. I thanks for the attention and you can find here uh, uh, the web address and there is also a, a public uh, access to the data uh, and uh, you're very much welcome to try that out yourself. Thanks a lot for your attention.